Hey guys, Will here again. Um, so yesterday, after I evaluated these images of uh, what seems to be clouds going behind the sun, um, I had done some research about uh, measuring the distance of the sun, and they proposed that you could easily find the distance of the sun using a sextant. And uh, what I found um, goes from there, and would love to show you guys. So this is uh, ESO.org. Uh, I'll show you right here, ESO.org. Okay, it's uh, European Week Scientific uh, Technology Culture. Um, and this is Astronomy Online. This is talking about uh, <clears throat> we will determine the size of the solar system by measuring the distance of a nearby minor planetoid, minor planet. Notice what they're calling a planet here, guys. An asteroid. Right. That's because a planet is just something that moves through the sky. It is not necessarily a globe that rotates around the Earth. I know the IAU has uh, some specific sets for what they call a planet. So we're um, going to determine the distance to the sun by using the sun's parallax. And uh, there's a lot of assumptions here, and there's some history into it. So here we have the methods of measurement. Aristarchus had the idea to measure the distance of the sun not as a multiple of the Earth's radius, but of the radius of the moon's orbit. So if we know the moon's distance, you can calculate the astronomical unit as a multiple of that. Um, measure distance of a smaller. Uh, so, and then physics laws. A lot of these are assumptions where we're going to assume that we know the distance to something else, and there may be a margin of error in there, and so we're making we're making assumptions. So remember the. In entire point of this is to determine the size of the solar system by measuring the distance of a nearby planet. So we're looking at the orbits, we're looking at how far is the sun away, uh, we're trying to put things in, <coughs> we're trying to put things in relative order, uh, relative terms. So it's talking about the above methods. Um, between physics and uh, measure something, measure something at smaller distance, or uh, measure as the radius of the moon's orbit. It says uh, Aristarchus can be most easily understood. It's impossible to realize it even by using a sextant. Um, therefore, reversing Romer's method of determining the velocity of light. Um, uh, deducing the radius of the Earth's orbit from the known value of velocity, right, seems to be the only method which can until now be done at schools by their own me measurements. So the only method of determining the size and the size of the solar system, that's the distance that we are from the sun uh, and therefore the distance of the other everything else in the solar system but from us to the sun's a big part okay the only method which can be used is you know determining the radius of the earth's orbit from the value of the velocity of light so if this isn't highly assumptive i don't know what it is guys um you know I'm definitely not one for these um, very abstract, very assumptive ways of science. This assumptions, these assumptions are not the way to prove something in reality. They can be support, but they are not proof. We need to look for something that can be proven, can be replicated, tested by other scientists not abstract math from the Greeks that they try to prove it's something that see the problem is they try to say that uh, 
their mask says something than what these people were trying to initially say. They were saying, okay, we'll look at their mask back then, and they make assumptions by this. So, anyways, the only way, and they said it, the only way to determine that is by making assumptions off the velocity of light. <laughs> well, if you don't have the correct solar system model, and let's say we're not rotating around the sun, then all of these assumptions about orbit and radiuses of the Earth's orbit in relation to the sun's distance, they're all assumptions and they all fall through because what if some of the basic assumptions are not right? What if we don't have the right model? If we take these calculations and we plug them into an incorrect model, we're going to get incorrect numbers, incorrect solutions. They may seem right, and we may assume that they're right, but we don't know that until we test our assumptions or until we determine a method of measuring this without assumptions, which is what we need. So thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, this is, this is what had me really looking at this, guys. Um, it just really seems, and this is the most wispy that you can find of the clouds, all this yellow. And there's none of it from these other clouds, not not a single hint of it. Um, so these assumptions, this measuring the distance, I'm not buying it as proof. Judge for yourself. Take care. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Like.